So in my last video, I gave you guys a tour of a mining PC that I built, and a lot of you commented and said, hey, we wish you had done a build video rather than doing a tour. And so today, we're gonna build a second PC with some similar components and some that are different, and we'll talk about those as we go through them. And we're gonna start by building the Miner Case V3. So let's get started. So the Miner Case V3 is pretty awesome. It comes with all the components that you'll need to build your mining PC. And um, it comes with all of these neat little injection molded, or you could also 3D print these if you wanted to make uh, more of them um, or build your own case from scratch. And that's kind of what's really interesting about the Miner Case is that it's all made from open source components. So this is really all just extruded aluminum, um, which is also sometimes called Maker Beam. And so you could get this stuff off of Amazon and you could actually build this case yourself. Now the cool thing um, about it is they've kind of put it all together in a kit and they've marked it up a little bit. Um, you could probably save about 25 or maybe even $50 if you got some cheaper um, equipment, um, um, or sorry, components, but really what's your time worth? And so in my case, I just thought I'd just go ahead and buy the kit. I don't have to sit out in the garage and drill holes in it and those types of things. Um, so my time's worth a little bit more um, in my case. Now, um, if you're looking to save some money, you certainly could consider building it yourself. Um, but let's go ahead and get started putting it together. Some of the reviews on Amazon say that it's kind of difficult, but I'm gonna tell you, I think it's pretty easy. And if you're at all mechanically inclined, I think it'll go just like that. Another thing that's really fantastic about the Miner Case V3 is that it's stackable. So I already have one of these rigs and I'll build a second one today and we'll stack it on top of the one that I already have. And that's a really cool feature for space saving. Um, so let's go ahead and get started and put it together. Okay, so these fan brackets are just really cool. Now, whoever came up with these is sort of a genius. The simplicity is amazing. I mean, really, it didn't take that much of a genius to make these, but you get the point. These are awesome. So they just allow you to link all of these fans together into one big long chain, and then it makes it really easy to connect to the miner case. And so let's put this together. It's pretty cool. So in the tour video I made, I really ruffled a lot of feathers because I didn't use this little plastic bracket. And that little plastic bracket is for holding in the power supply. And I'm surprised how many people said that I was a moron because I didn't use it. But the truth of the matter is I needed the power cord to exit on this side because of the piece of furniture that I was setting the miner in. And so I'm gonna go ahead and use it for this build video so that everyone knows what it's for. But I'll just go ahead and change it afterwards so that I can put it in the same furniture with my other miner. But yes, that is what this is for. Okay, so I'm not going to go over the installation of the CPU and the RAM and all of that jazz. I have plenty of other videos that go into those topics. One thing I do want to point out though is that I did not use this Intel stock cooler that came with the processor. Um, this thing is incredibly loud. It's louder than all six video cards put together. If you're putting it out in your workshop or in a building somewhere and you don't really care about it, great but if you're putting it in your home like most of us are i highly recommend that you upgrade to a silent cooler in this case this noctua l95 and so let's go ahead and put all of that in the miner case
Okay, so at this point, I recommend that you go ahead and stop your build process and go ahead and install your operating system. There's a really good reason to do this, and that is because you want to get all of the kinks worked out, all of your drivers installed, and everything working before you start installing the video cards. And so in my case, I'm going to use Windows 10 because I feel like the drivers are quite a bit more stable in Windows than they are in Linux. But Linux works well as well, and you're certainly welcome to use it. I have lots of Linux systems in my environment. We're going to go with Windows 10 in this build. Um, I'm going to use the AMD um, Radeon RX 580 in this build, and I got a smoking deal on this, and I'll link to that in the description. Um, I bought six of these. And so what we're going to do next is install one video card, get it in the system, get it installed, get all the drivers configured, make sure it works, and then we'll add all of the rest. This will take a lot of the headache out of installing it. I've, I've read in the comments numerous times in my tour video um, that's also linked in the description that you installed all six cards and you can only get two or three to recognize. And that is indicative of trying to put them all in at once. So go ahead and just install one card, get it working, get all the drivers installed and configured, and then add the rest. And I think you'll have a lot less headache. So let's do that. So I already have several write-ups on my website about why we use riser cards. So I'm not going to go too into detail on that, but I do want to point out that it would be next to impossible to get six of these cards to sit side by side on this motherboard. In fact, it would be impossible. And so the risers allow us to USB connect the video cards and get them up here and out of the way. This also allows us to keep them very cool. And so that's the main reason for riser cards. The other reason is they convert 1x slots to 16x slots since we don't need all of this bandwidth. Um, we're basically just giving the, uh, C the, sorry, the GPU a math problem and waiting for it to give us an answer. So it's not like playing a video game. Okay, so we have the first card installed. All the drivers are installed. Everything is working fine. And so here's the card. And so I have the VGA, sorry, the HDMI um, plugged into that card right now. After I get all of the cards installed and I know everything is working, I will go back into the BIOS and move the main video back to this. This way we're never burdening any of the cards with actual video processing and they can focus on mining. So now that we've done that, it's time to go ahead and install all of the rest of the risers and the cards. So that, in a nutshell, is how you build a mining rig. And um, all you have to do now is install your mining software and overclock your GPUs. And so I have all kinds of resources on both on my website and on YouTube on how to do those things. So I'm not going to repeat those in this video. Just check out thegeekpub.com for more info. One thing I would like to do, though, before we go is just show you a few little differences between this machine and the previous machine. So on my previous build, I used a uh, Biostar uh, BTC or um, a Bitcoin uh, board, as they call it. Um, on this particular machine, I went ahead and just used an Asus B250 board. It does have mining settings in the BIOS. Um, the main reason I picked this board is because since my last video, those other boards have went through the roof in price. It seems like everybody wants one, so um, I just decided to buy this one instead. The one thing that is irritating me about this board is I can't figure out how to turn on the integrated display um, when a different um, GPU is installed. And so I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, I'll do that here in a little bit. Um, the other thing that is the, the I guess the, probably the, the biggest major difference is that I use the AMD RX 580s in this particular build. 
Um, in the previous build, I used uh, GTX 1060s. Now, here's what's really interesting about that. If you look at my hash rates in Ethereum, I'm getting somewhere between 22 and 27, um, depending on the share that I'm currently processing. Um, but what I'm also noticing is that I'm using about 800 watts. So these cards are doing a little bit more processing, um, but they're using a lot more energy. Now I have a feeling that I can probably tweak the overclock settings and get some more power out of these, or sorry, get some more hashing power out of these guys and probably reduce my wattage. So I'm also gonna work on that after the video and I'll post um, an update on the blog um, and in the comments below um, with my findings on that. But I just don't have time to do that before completing this video. The last thing I just want to draw a little attention to, again, is the fact that I used this other CPU cooler. Um, this thing is incredibly quiet compared to the stock cooler, and so if noise is a problem, be sure to replace the stock cooler with one of these guys, or something similar. I have several options on thegeekpub.com that I've used in the past. One of the things that I do recommend if you decide to build an AMD-based mining rig instead of an NVIDIA-based rig is that you use AMD's mining drivers. I can tell you right now that, that the difference, and I tried them both, the difference is about two mega hashes per card, at least in what I was seeing. So I highly recommend that you get those. Um, well, that's all for this video. I'll look for you in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.